welcome to a spotlight on it is happened in Grand Prairie, the history of Grand Prairie and some important people that made that history happen and are still making history today. This is our history tape number 423 and we are extremely honored today. We have with us, I would say His Majesty because that's what he wants us to call him, <laughs> but his honor, Mr. Dwayne McGuffey, Mr. Kenneth Dwayne McGuffey. Welcome to the set, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Ruthie Jackson. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. It's a pleasure for you to be here and with your beautiful wife, Joyce. Joyce, we're just so glad to have you with us, Thank my you, dear. Thank you, Miss Ruthie. All right, uh, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. We want to find out about the real Dwayne McGuffey. The real Dwayne McGuffey. All right, and All this right. is your camera, and if you would look out into that camera and tell us about your uh, genealogy, would you uh, mention your family? I, uh, my mother and father are both from Collin County. All right. And uh, it's uh, kind of one of those mysterious things that got together, and when you look back upon it, uh, my mother and father uniting in marriage is one of those uh, uh, unusual experiences. I mean experience in the sense she was a public school teacher. She had two to, two years of, uh, of college at East Texas State Teachers College Oh wow! down in Commerce. She had a teaching certificate and she taught at Verona uh, community which is between Princeton and Blue Ridge up northeast uh, yes. Collin County. Yes. And uh, she, I think, was probably born right south of uh, Blue Ridge uh, over there, a uh, little community called Snow Hill between Blue Ridge and Farmersville. What was her maiden name? Her maiden name was Brockman. Brockman, okay. Opal Jewel Brockman. Okay. And uh, she uh, had two brothers, and uh, uh, she was the only girl from the Brockman uh, before he died that uh, my grandmother was married twice, then she married a young and had two more boys and a girl. Okay. So uh, she's one of six or one of three, depending on which uh, husband uh, yes. you look upon. But anyway, my father was uh, the sixth or seventh child, I've forgotten, I regret, of 11 children. Great. Born uh, between Blue Ridge and Pike. All right. A little Pike is a community on more northeast of Blue Ridge, and uh, he was uh, uh, quite a, uh, a macho, uh, renegade uh, type of guy that ran around all over northeast uh, Collin County. All right. And my mother must have been attracted to this macho guy called Terrence Bishop McGuffey. All right. Uh, the sixth of eleven or seventh of eleven children. Seven very Irish, very Irish. Very Irish, and I've been told that may be Scottish. Good. A Roman Catholic priest once looked up in his book and he said, I don't find any McGuffeys. I'm from the old sod. And I said, well, that's all right. I'd rather be Scottish anyway. But I don't know if I'm Scottish or Irish. But my dad always said, we're Scotch-Irish. So Good. That'll go for that. And uh, you were born where? I was born uh, in White Wright, up White near Wright. up near Sherman, but only lived there for six or eight months. And my dad moved to a uh, a farm just east of Cottage Hill Cemetery, which is very close to Salina, yes, northwest of uh, McKinney. So uh, about a mile and a quarter east of Cottage Hill Cemetery. There's a little Methodist chapel there at the Cottage Hill Cemetery. I was raised on a farm. My dad was a sharecropper. Good. Did you ever get to help with all of the things that were going on at the farm? Uh, in, uh, in a very limited way. Uh, I, it's amazing what you remember of your first nine years, uh, ten years of, of living on the farm, and I did. I got to slop the hogs Got to watch my dad milk. Got to watch hogs cleaned in the fall. Yes. You mm -hmm. know, killed and cleaned. Mm -hmm. uh, hang them in the smokehouse. Hang them in the smokehouse. Okay. And, uh, Where'd you start to school? Chambersville. 
Chambersville, that's different from Salina or any of these other places. Okay. Chambersville is on three or four miles east of the farm where I live. Was it a big school or a little no, school? No, it was a little school. It, it, well, it went through, I think, the 10th, or no, it, in those days. The 7th? It, it went through at least the 7th or 8th grade. And there was a, the only thing left at Chambersville now is a Methodist church. Mm -hmm. Chambersville School has dissolved and no longer there, and the cotton gin is gone, and uh, the cemetery is still across the street from the Methodist Church, but uh, Chambersville is uh, almost due north of uh, McKinney. After Chambersville, what? Three years at Chambersville, I went to Bloomdale, which was, uh, is northwest of, uh, of uh, McKinney, and I had to ride a horse to school. The bus didn't pick us up. We were on a, we moved from the first farm to the second farm and my dad bought a horse and he would saddle it and my, my sister and myself would actually ride that horse to school. Good. Sounds fun and romantic, but in the middle it's of tough. winter, it gets cold. It's tough. And if the horse runs away from you and then you have to walk home, it's even worse, isn't it? That's right. All right. And where did you graduate from high school? Grand Prairie High School. All right, what brought you from Salina and Bloomdale and everything to Grand Prairie, Texas? Well, like all the Texas Okies and Arkies during World War II, okay. there was a great migration to California. All right. First time my dad ever had a paying job, made 90 cents an hour, thought right. he was rich. Where was he working? In the shipyards. In the shipyards, okay. In, uh, in uh, uh, Long Beach, uh, Pedro, Pedro, Pedro Island, I believe they call it okay. out there. Uh, Pedro Shipyards in Long Beach. Okay. And he worked there and he had to work the midnight shift and then Did he take he, all the family with him? He did. And we lived in Bellflower, California. Bellflower. And uh, I uh, went to uh, the fifth, sixth, and seventh grade in, uh, in Bellflower, California. And uh, then we came back to Texas after the war. My dad thought everything was going to close down, of course, oh, yes. which is right the opposite of what happened, yes. but he wanted to come back to Texas anyway. So we moved back to McKinney, and I went to the eighth grade in McKinney, Pleasant Grove, and Plano, or McKinney, Plano, and Pleasant Grove. All right. In, in the eighth grade. I can't believe that. Then we that moved to San, An San Angelo for the ninth grade. Then he moved in 1947 to Grand Prairie. What brought him in 1947 to Grand Prairie? We had other uh, relatives living here, Horace Ballou uh, okay. and Audrey Ballou. Uh, I have a, a cousin by the name of Horace that graduated from high school with me. Uh, they were living here, and then he had one other family that he knew in Grand Prairie. And so we moved here. The uh, construction building, uh, construction was contracting, carpentering, which is what he did. Uh, was good here in Grand Prairie, and so we moved here between my ninth and tenth grade in, in the summer of 1947. And that made you a full-fledged gopher, even though you didn't get to go here, but about three years as a gopher, right? That's right. Three years, sophomore, junior, and senior year. Class of what? Class of 1950. You had your reunion last year. Just had a reunion. We had 34 of 74 that we could locate. That is wonderful. Um, I found you in the yearbook. You were a busy little rascal during your senior year at uh, Grand Prairie High School. We had fun. I we see. had fun. Buddy Grantham was the president. I was vice president. Uh, Martha Livingston was the secretary, and Peggy Parker, I think, was the treasurer. In fact, I have a go for the last issue of 1950. You may want it for the history of we'll, Grand Prairie we'll High School. We'll put it in the archives. We'd love to have that. Great. Okay, and after you, uh, where did you meet your wonderful wife, Joyce? Was she anywhere near in this time frame? Yes, during my, uh, between my junior and senior year, I had noticed this girl before at a basketball game. I had seen her across the court. Well, we're going to have to leave her across the court then right now because if she's a gopher also, yes. we're going to have to bring her along. Would you relinquish the chair, Your Honor, I, just a minute and let us get Joyce into this picture? I would be happy to and would love for her to tell her story. All right, Joyce, let's look out into your camera and tell us, uh, Joyce, a little bit about your, uh, uh, your history. Okay. 
Uh, it's interesting that my history also began in Collin County. Okay. Uh, I was born in Collin County. My parents uh, were born, I suppose my dad, I'm really not sure about my dad, but I'm assuming they both were, uh, were born up in, in that around, area uh, around McKinney. I'm Give us their names, now. would you? Uh huh. Raymond Thomas Poplin and Bertie Leon McQuarrie Poplin. Okay. Okay. And did you have brothers or sisters? I have two sisters, no brothers. All right. I have a uh, sister older, Elsie uh, Calloway, and a younger sister, Ruby. Okay. And that both of them are gophers. All right. And yeah. I know that Elsie is here in town. Uh -huh. Ruby uh, lives in Bedford. All right. You mm -hmm. let her get away to Bedford, but right. that's all right. Right. And Elsie has, has been a very important stem winder in the Woman's Club here in Grand Prairie. But uh, tell me of when you moved to Grand Prairie, mm -hmm. Texas. We moved uh, to Grand Prairie in 1942. 1942. Uh -huh. That was right after the war had started and mm -hmm. all of this good stuff. That's and, the reason uh, we moved here. What uh, grade were you in when you moved to Grand Prairie, Texas? Uh, I was starting, I guess, the fourth grade. Tell you the truth, I've about forgotten, but it must have been about the fourth grade. All right, yeah. and where did you start to school? I started to school just for a few months in Grand Prairie High School. Okay. And then as soon as David Crockett opened that fall, right. uh, of course, living on the south side of the railroad track, yes. uh, I went to uh, Crockett, Crockett and also Southside was over there and yes. they, had, they changed those grades back and forth. Yes, they did. Yeah, so I also went to Southside. You, you are one of the few I've interviewed that were actually were a student at Southside. Yeah. That is really great. Yeah, it was. Okay, yeah. and then after Southside, did you go to uh, Grand Prairie Middle School or did you go on to Grand well, Prairie High School? Well, we didn't have middle school at back all. when okay. I went. No, right. if it was any middle school, it was Southside. Oh. But I went at Southside, but I actually finished the eighth grade at Crockett. At Crockett and uh, and Southside, do you have a favorite teacher, a favorite mentor, or someone that was uh, uh, that's in your memory you'd like to put on this tape? Mm -hmm. uh, not from school, I don't think. All right. Uh, my teachers were all fine. Okay. And, and I think my mentors were my Sunday school teachers at the First Baptist Church. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Aunt Eula Robinson, but we all called her Aunt Eula. Yes, and you to did. This day that uh, I think of her as Aunt Eula, and I have to stop and think her what, last name. What her real name was. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, but then you went on to Grand Prairie High, High School. High School, I did. Uh, who was the principal when you went to Grand Prairie High? Mm. That was a long time ago, <laughs> wasn't it? It was Pat Woos Woosley. Was that Pat who it was Woosley. then? And uh, then Br M. Browning Combs That's followed That's who I him. remember, Browning uh -huh, Combs. Browning the Combs. Most. Okay, y'all yeah. are bringing up some good names. Mm. I, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. M. Browning and uh, John Roberts' father. I forget. John, I, Mr. L. A. Roberts. L. A. Roberts was right. the superintendent. Superintendent mm -hmm. of schools. Yes, mm -hmm. he was. All right, uh, Joyce, tell me a little bit about in high school as a gopher. Have any favorite teachers up there that are favorite kids that you <coughs> piled around with? What you well, do in high school? Um, I liked the sports, and uh, we, I had a lot of fun in high school. I really enjoyed all the years that I went to school in Grand Prairie, very much, okay. and had a lot of friends. As a matter of fact, those friends we still meet every two months now. We have gotten back together after many years, them being gone and myself, and uh, being only a year behind Wayne in school. When we have these gatherings every two months, uh, yes. of course, he gets to go, and he knows them as well as I do. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And I guess my senior year, uh, being a uh, gopher cheerleader was really an honor. Oh, that is an honor. Yeah, I appreciated that and the, the and support And you graduated in 1951? Right. 1951 uh -huh. was the magic year. Uh -huh. Anything else about your uh, senior year in high school or... Uh, did you play basketball or any of the Just sports? in gym, that's all. Just in gym, uh -huh. but not, not mm -hmm. in the, the no, real. just because we had to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, is My there... senior year, now, Dwayne was gone off in the service. Uh, all right. Uh -huh. We're going to get back to him okay. then, but uh, during your senior year. Mm -hmm. We have you to your senior year now, and we have him just the year before. Uh, tell me how you met this child. I, I met... Uh, I. I don't know how we actually... Uh, was it at the First Baptist Church? No, it was not. Regrettably, <laughs> we, we knew each other from... Uh, and we knew that uh, 
we went to First Baptist, but I saw her across the court at basketball game, and I said, who is that good-looking girl in the black sweater uh, across yes, the yes. court? And uh, she knew my sister, and uh, so and she showed up which at, of your sister? at my house. Norma Sue is two years younger. She just recently passed away a all year right. ago last November. Norma Sue, okay, Norma but she was Sue. a gopher also. Yes, and she would have graduated, I think, in 53. All right. And then I have a uh, 15, uh, uh, Linda Gale is 15 year, I was a sophomore. She was born the year we moved to Grand Prairie. She uh -huh. lives in Joplin, Missouri. But uh, anyway, finally, uh, I don't even remember how we wound up uh, meeting, uh, who introduced us or anything. I may have approached her in the hallway at school. You probably and did. I probably did. And I said, uh, let's go out. And uh, we did go out and uh, dated during my senior year and her junior year. And then I joined the military. Which branch? Mm -hmm. Which branch? The Air Force in January of 1951. The Korean War started in January or in June of 1950. I was running the A. Taylor, old A. Taylor service station. Yes. At the alleyway between yes. Ralph Clark uh, Parts. Next and, door to the Baptist Church. Yes. Oh well, yes. it was right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So my father bought that. Yes. Or rented it. All right. And let me get some entrepreneurial experience in service station work. Uh -huh. Where John Darty used to work. Where John Darty. John oh, Darty. Oh, he ran that station for A. Taylor. Yes. Then they opened up down on Seventh Street and yes. a little fancier <clears throat> place. But it, before that, I opened up or assisted in opening up the Good Luck Oil Service uh, Station down on East Main. East Main Street, yeah. We gave away little uh, packets of candy to all the five-gallon purchasers. Oh, great. Well, anyway. anyway. And then you went on off to the service to the Air Force, I believe. Then I went off in the Air Force for, for, uh, for joined for four years. And uh, she came down to visit me at Lackland while I was in basic training. And I encouraged her to accept me as her uh, you future husband. You proposed real big, Yes. You? We were both 18, and so we got married. As soon as she finished high school in May, we married July the 6th, 1951, and our 50th is coming up this year. Oh, How about isn't that? that exciting? It's exciting. Yes, it is. 50 years. And then, But you did take her on down to Lackland with you, and then where else did you go that you could take her? Uh, well, from Lackland, they, they sent all of us folks. It was madhouse confusion down there because so many people were coming into the military yes. at that time. And they sent me to Langley Air Force Base, Newport News, Hampton, Virginia. And I spent my entire enlistment at Langley Air Force Base as a synthetic trainer instructor, which is instrument training yes. for pilots. Yes, uh-huh. That was exciting, wasn't it? Oh, it was. Uh -huh. uh, I wanted to go in the air police. I thought they flew all over and policed the skies, uh -huh. but they really didn't. They really didn't. They, they do Did you have work. Joyce with you in Virginia? West with Virginia? a PFC. I, came, I was a PFC. I came back to Grand Prairie. The Reverend Dickey married us at First Baptist Church in uh, Grand Prairie. And uh, the pastor, Brother Taylor, was out of town. Was he not? Wasn't he? Brother Taylor Correct. was the pastor at that time, James Taylor. And uh, he was out of town, so Brother Dickey lived right down here in Indian Hills, father of Kenneth and Dorsell Dickey. Uh, Kenneth's still in Grand Prairie. Uh, he performed the wedding ceremony, and we left Grand Prairie July the 5th or 6th or 7th, uh, in a 1940 uh, Ford headed for Newport News, Langley Air Force Base, Virginia. What brought you back to Grand Prairie, Texas? I, during the time that I was stationed at Langley, we joined, we moved our church membership to a Baptist church in Newport News, Ivy Memorial Baptist Church. Without lab belaboring the point, uh, I felt that I should give my life to the Lord in complete surrender. Mm -hmm. The pastor interpreted that to mean you want to be a preacher. Well, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, you ended anyway, up being a chaplain, didn't you? So I wound up coming back to Grand Prairie, starting at Arlington State College, a junior college, uh, now UTA. Finished up at North Texas uh, University, North Texas State College at that time. Went to Southwestern Baptist Seminary and uh, 
You became a man of the cloth. Matt became a man of the cloth. Right. But came back to Grand Prairie simply because it was home. Mm -hmm. and, and I knew that uh, the seminary was over there, but I didn't know anything about it. But uh, uh, had I known uh, the length of time that it took and uh, all of the pain and suffering that it was required to get the, your degree uh, from both institutions, uh, it's a good thing we don't know how much we got at work sometimes. Okay. Now. Uh, I, I'm talking too much. You ask questions. I'm going to. Uh, and I'm short gapping you a little bit along sure, the way. Sure. But that's all right. Uh, what I want to know now, after you finished your training, uh, did you stay in the military to be a chaplain or what happened quickly? No, I had two student pastorates. My GI Bill ran out. In, uh, in 1957, 58, and uh, the Lord provided uh, a church. Uh, the same month my GI Bill ran out, the Lord provided a church. Foot Baptist Church in Collin County. Then I was there 18, 20 months, and then the Mount Olive Baptist Church that later became Fairview Baptist Church just south of McKinney uh, called me. Then I went to, as a chaplain at Baylor University Medical Center for a year. And then uh, I uh, was pastoring Interim Church Trinity Baptist in Dallas, and then they asked me to become their pastor. And I was pastor four years of Trinity Baptist Church on Cole Avenue right. between Fitzhugh and Knox no, in right the old North is. Dallas area. Mm -hmm. uh, and during, that past, during my pastoral time at Trinity, Charles Pitts, who was once president of, uh, or sometime president of Dallas Baptist University, yes. was the 49th Armored Division chaplain, and he knew of me because my church was near his Highland Church yes. in Dallas. So he said, Dwayne, would you like to be a chaplain in the tech 49th Armored Division, uh, Texas National Guard? And I said, yes. That whetted my appetite. So that got you into the chaplain. And then I went, or... because my enlisted time uh, was all Air Force. I went back in the Air Force as a chaplain in 1965. Spent 20 years as a chaplain. As a chaplain. In the meantime, Joyce, what were you doing during all this? Did you have a family? Did you work or what? No, I worked till he got out of school. All right. Well, I shouldn't say, I, yeah, I did. I worked until he got out of school. And then, by then, we had, uh, well, the month he graduated from Southwestern Seminary in Fort Worth, we had our second daughter. All right, let's name your two daughters. Okay. Karen Renee Owens now. All right. And uh, Nixie Rochelle Arevalo is our second daughter. Okay. And uh, do and you have other children other than those? The, the only two children. The only those mm -hmm. two children, and they're really special. Oh. He's got a house full of women to contend oh, right. with during all of this time. And exactly. He needed to be a chaplain, didn't he? <laughs> all right. Exactly. And uh, being a chaplain, what brought you? Uh, we have about four minutes left on this interview. I want to know what brought you into the political scene in Grand Prairie, Texas. Having been the mayor, his honor of Grand Prairie, Texas, what? What did your appetite for that jump? Ruthie, we never intended to come back to Grand Prairie, really. All right. But I got involved in a, uh, in a scheme in Grand, in, uh, from California raising cashew nuts. And I was going to become a gentleman farmer and raise cashew nuts, as well as do good in uh, vacation Bible school and missionary work on a Caribbean island and all that. She said, if you're going to be looking for your farm on a tropical island, why don't I just go back to Grand Prairie? We were in Austin, Texas. Yes. And uh, my sister's there, my father's there. So uh, I said, great, that's a good idea. So we came back to Grand Prairie, and I discovered after doing my research, after I invested some money in this cashew nut farm, that they turned out to not be less than honorable people, and it was all a fluke. And so, so I, here you are in Grand Prairie. Here I am in Grand Prairie, and I said, well, what now? And it was at the time when Grand Prairie divided itself into single-member districts. districts. And I said, I've always wondered what went on at the, in that smoke-filled room down at City Hall. All right, so you ran for office. So I ran for office. For a district office? office? Uh, for District uh, 4, I believe district it was. District 4, all right. Uh, out uh, south of I-20. All uh, right. Well, actually, Dalworth, 
Forum, Shell, yes. uh, mm -hmm. Sheffield Village. Did you win that Forum. election? I won that. Mo Day and I, uh, he ran, he won it uh, later, but uh, yes, I won that uh, council seat in 1988. And for then, District 4, and then? And then, uh, Jerry DeBow, it was time for him to retire. All right. He had been up there for six years, and right. I felt like that, uh, that uh, Grand Prairie should have a new leadership. Chaplain Mayor. Chaplain Mayor. So I ran for uh, ran for mayor. Uh, you remember the uh, and uh, Ann Grisham. Yes. And uh, Tommy Ellison uh, was in that bank president here. And, yes. And a uh, school board park board member, Ma uh, Mahan, Ma and one of our police people. There were right. five of us in the race, and. Uh, uh, Ann Grisham and I were in the runoff, and I became the mayor of beautiful Grand Prairie. Of Grand Prairie, Texas. Mm -hmm. Yes. And was that an exciting? Who was your city manager? Uh, Wendell Halsey at the time. At the time, Wendell was Halsey was Wendell your Halsey. city manager. Uh -huh. And uh, and then. Uh, and you had a lot of famous people working up there on the dais with you, and that's when we had was it seven members. Or now it was nine. Well, it was nine. It would already increase to nine when I got uh, when, when I was there. there. It would already been expanded mm -hmm. from seven to nine. I mm -hmm. guess what eighty six mm -hmm. maybe. And I had to be your mayor pro tem yes, for a couple you were. of times. Yes, and it was a very educational experience, and I enjoyed. Uh, I wanted to say every minute of it. We had some. The agony and the ecstasy of being yes. in political office in yes. beautiful Grand Prairie. Yes. All right. Uh, anything you want to add to this, Joyce? We have only a half a minute left for you and a minute for him to wrap up. Is there anything you'd like to say about uh, your role as following this young man along for all of these years? It's been, we've had our good times, we've had our bad times, but you learn from those bad times, or hard times, I should say, not bad times, but hard times, especially when we were separated, him being in the service, going to Korea, yes. to the Philippines without the girls and I. Yes. But we made it through that and drew uh, closer together because of it. All right, mm -hmm. in one minute, look out and say anything you want to your honor. <laughs> Former Mayor Dwayne McGuffey. Well, let me say to those of you who may be watching uh, the Ruthie Jackson show, what an honor it is to be here with Ruthie. Ruthie's an institution. Ruthie loves this town, as all of us do. She's been a part here forever and will always be a part of this city. But it's, it's a pleasure to be a part of, the, of Grand Prairie and to be here and to enjoy uh, knowing the community and knowing each of you. And uh, You plan to make this your final resting place? We are always uh, in the, in the uh, position of being in the military for 30 years. I'm not sure where we're always going to be. <laughs> Dwayne McGuffey, your honor, it was great having you on the dais. We could have spent two hours just listening to you spin some of those exciting things, Joyce. Thank you very much for bringing him today. Thank you for having us You here. bet. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you, and would you join me in saying, it happens in, in Grand, Grand Prairie, Prairie, Texas. Texas.